Good morning, everyone. Um, is this on? Yep. Uh, first, before I get started, let me uh, apologise for those that know me. My speech is normally a lot clearer than this, but I had dental surgery last week, so I'm still uh, trying to get over that. I'm sure most of you know who Hatch is, um, but just a, a couple of slides, a brief introduction as to you know, why, the, why the heck are we involved in this? You know, we're a consulting engineering company. What are we doing in, in developing new, new equipment? We, we service the industry in, in a number of ways. Um, obviously, the metals industry, but developing out of that into infrastructure and energy, um, digital, and getting into investments. And we, we have as, as one of the core parts of our group, technology development. We have a, a significant number of people who are involved solely in technology development and technology commercialization. Um, we also have expertise in various processing technologies, and so that meshes together very well. So we, we feel that we're ideally suited and, and, and very interested in working with this group and, and developing this disruptive technology. Um, we've got good experience in commercializing, so we hope we can take this all the way down the path. What is it we're trying to address here? Um, the, the, the challenge is that mining, um, particularly processing, consumes vast amounts of, of energy. 50% um, of the energy in a, in a processing plant is consumed in the comminution section. Uh, and a lot of that energy is, is wasted. Uh, m the, the accepted levels of, of efficiency for, for mills, uh, you know, are, are, are at most about 5% actually converted into useful work. Um, there's been very little change in technologies for a long, long time. Um, tumbling mills have, have just got bigger and, and arguably less efficient. HB, HBGR has come along, um, came out of, of, a, of a parallel industry, came out of cement largely and, and has taken over 30 years to get accepted into, into hard rock mining. We, we hope that what we're talking about today can get accepted a lot more quickly than that. How did this start? Uh, on behalf of, of CMIC, uh, a couple of years ago now, uh, Hatch conducted a, an appraisal study of emerging comminution technologies, and there were about 26 that we looked at altogether. Uh, we ranked these on a number of different criteria and shortlisted three uh, as worthy of further attention. And after a number of rounds of discussion within the process group of CMIC, um, the CAM technology emerged as the one that was at a point where it was ripe for more impetus, more, more real study, uh, it, and it was selected as the front runner to go forward. This is technology that was developed by um, Larry Nordell. Uh, he, he's been working on this for a number of years, and it, it came out of his, essentially out of his studies on, on milling, and recognizing that most of the work in a tumbling mill is done in what you can see here in the, in the top view, uh, in the red, the red area or in the sort of six, seven, eight o'clock area within a mill. This is where most of the, of the energy is actually used. The, the concept of the conjugate anvil hammer mill, which is um, interlocking concentric inner hammer ring and outer anvil ring, has been extensively modeled using DEM. Um, it's been tested at UBC using the same piston die technology which is extensively used to validate and, and, and test uh, the, the HPGR. The, these early results have shown great promise for the, for in the potential for energy reduction and compared to an HPGR, which is considered the most efficient, particularly for hard rock at the moment, 
the CAM shows that it can get up to 50% energy savings for similar levels of comminution. The modeling has, has shown that similar particle size distributions can be obtained. Um, the, the concept of the, of the machine where the, the crushed particles exit through ports in the outer anvil ring uh, means that there is some inherent internal screening. So there may be an opportunity to reduce the complexity of circuits, reduce the recirculation externally. And these pre preliminary results have shown that, that we can get in excess of a 10 to 1 reduction ratio uh, in, in, in a single pass in the machine. It's high um, because there is some internal circulation within the machine. Not everything is crushed and exits in the first rotation. It, there is the capability for particles to go around multiple times. As an extension of, of this technology, um, there is a, a, another application, a monoroll, which is looking at putting a fluted roll inside a mill, uh, again, to concentrate the, the energy, the effort, into a single point rather than distributed around, around the shell. All of these uh, are being looked at currently um, at the case study and modeling stages. We're looking at a couple of base case. This is a, a very simplified uh, representation of a conventional sag ball circuit. We're also looking at, at um, as another base case, an HPGR circuit, which would be HPGR, or which would be primary crush, secondary crush, HPGR ball mill. Um, as I said earlier, that these, are, these are more efficient than, than straight milling. Um, they, can, they can provide significant energy savings, uh, particularly in, in highly competent rocks and in locations where the, the energy cost is high. But the capital cost is really little different. And in fact, it's often more than a sag mill circuit. Um, the complexity is, is much greater. Um, there's a lot of conveyors and screens to, to maintain as well, so it doesn't always provide the benefit that you might first think because of the reduction in energy. If we take the, the predicted CAM performance of a 50% energy reduction, we, we've shown that the net present cost of a, of a project can be reduced by somewhere between 5 and 10% if the CAM technology fulfills its promise. And, and everything we've done so far is showing that, that yes, it can. What, was the, what would the CAM circuit look like? Uh, there's a couple of, of, um, of examples. One would be replacing either a sag mill or a secondary crush HPGR circuit uh, and going from primary crush through CAM to ball mill. This would be a significant simplification of, of particularly an HPGR type circuit. And we think, based on the case studies that we've done so far, that we could get maybe even a 15% reduction in net present cost. Taking the concept even further, if we introduce the, the monoroll, which I touched on briefly, um, this is perhaps a, um, a more logical approach to the entire platform. Um, the, the CAM in an open circuit type configuration would, would not produce ideal ball mill feed particle sizes. However, use the monoroll, it would accept a higher feed. So, where are we going from, from here? Um, the project has been fortunate enough to gain some, some funding, uh, which we're in the process of, of finalising. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but we're close. Yeah. <laughs> Julian, <coughs> nodding. Um, so what are we doing? Uh, we're doing more DEM work uh, to try and look at what, what are the impacts of speed, 
uh, geometrical configuration uh, so that we can actually build a prototype and test. And that testing will be done at Corem. And at this point, I will hand over to Gianni to continue and discuss how we're going to test it. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, so Nick presented the, uh, the flow sheet for the CAM and the monorail. So I'll be explaining, explaining a little bit about how we will be installing the CAM and retrofitting the monorail in our existing uh, uh, bowel mill. So, okay, here you have a picture of Corem's facility. So this is a, a pallet <coughs> plant where we do a lot of uh, mineral processing projects. Uh, just a little bit of information about Corem. Corem is situated in Quebec City where there are uh, 160 uh, people, employees at Corem, where there's 45 professional engineers, metallurgists, mineralogists, uh, chemists, and about 95 uh, uh, tech uh, technical people from different level te technicians, technologists, mechanical people, electrician, and so on. Uh, in 2014, just to give you some background why the CAM in Montreal is coming to Corem for the test work and installation, in 2014, we did an installation of uh, HPGR pallet unit. It's a uh, uh, 80 tons per hour capacity, two mowers of 250 kilowatts. So it's a big machine, and it was a great challenge for Karem, and we really succeeded in the installation of this equipment. And for the CAM and monorail thing, it's a very interesting project, very challenging, and I think it will change the uh, the way we see grinding in the future. Uh, so the plant is able to process about 2.5 two, 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 two tons per hour. So you have a general view of the communication circuit. If I do like a zoom, so on the first floor, on the dotted square, you have the sag mill that we'll be using uh, during the test work. And on, this, on the left side, you have the side view of the sag mill where we eventually we can install the cam on the first floor, on the second floor. Why is this sector very privileged? Is because of the infrastructure around the, sorry, all the infrastructure around the equipment. And there's conveyors, there's the bin to, to put the, the ore. I think I have a problem with this. Do you hear me? Yes? Okay. Uh, so there's all the infrastructure, dust collectors, Okay, give me that. Ah, oh, seems to work again. <laughs> okay, next time I'll, I'll shave it. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so this is better. Okay, and so we have the sag mill, so we can place the uh, the cam uh, equipments just beside the the, uh, the sag mill, so we can take advantage of all infrastructures. And then behind that gray reservoir, there's the mill that we'll be modifying, so we'll retrofit the uh, uh, liners. So let's spin a little bit more. Okay, so this is the, the actual, the bow mill that will, it's a conventional bow mill that we can use as a bow or a round mill. It's a 42 by 60 inch equipment. And eventually we'll be putting new liners in the mill. So as Mick presented, so we have the monorail, so the pattern has to be uh, defined by modeling and with uh, the edge people, they will design all the specification related to this type of liner. So we'll be inserting like three to four section of this liner. So this mill will be used as a, as a bowl mill and as a monorail. Uh, also, because of the configuration of the mill, uh, the maximum uh, the maximum raw uh, mass will be around 2.5 tons. 2.5 tons, exactly. Uh, so the ore preparation, so we're receiving uh, 100 tons of material from the Osisco Mining Group. They are volunteered to, to uh, give uh, 
uh, mineralized material. It's a very hard material. So we'll be doing primary crushing to reduce the material to feed the different equipments, the SAG, the HPGR, and the, uh, the CAM equipment. <coughs> So we'll characterize the material with, by doing the drop weight test, ball, rod mill, the sag design, the crusher work index, and all the, the grindability test work to characterize correctly the material. So this is an example of the methodology that we'll be looking at for to validate the CAM technologies versus the sag or the HPGR. At each step that will be reducing the material will monitor the energy required to, redu re to, to the reduction of the particle size. So we'll do a summation of, to reach a certain target of material particle size. So we'll sum all the energy required to reduce that, uh, that material. So then, we, once we prepare that material with the three technologies for the primary grinding stage, then we'll do the performance versus the ball mill and the mono roll. So here again, we'll continue the, the work by doing different combinations, for example, the cam, then uh, using a mono roll and the cam versus the ball mill, and we'll compare that with the other technology. So we'll have a, a clear idea of the energy reduction when using the cam versus the HPGR or the, uh, the SAG, SAG mill. And just to finish with the uh, criteria specification. So we'll be looking at the specific energy consumption. So that's the power draw versus uh, divided by the, uh, the feed rate. We'll, we'll be looking at the operating work index. So it's the, the specific energy consumption divided by the square root of the product and feed uh, uh, of, of the uh, machine. We'll be looking at different particle size. And then we'll be looking also maybe at the energy versus the area, so the area is the surface of material that was generated, generated during the uh, different grinding stages. Okay? Great. What uh, ball mill versus the, versus the monorail, what percentage of uh, improvement in energy are you looking for? Nick, maybe you can answer that. Maybe we're saying like 15% of... How much? 15%? Is that the number that you mentioned? You know, because you can use a brick discharge mill and get to about 25%. Okay. So you should be looking at ball mill versus uh, monorail versus a great discharge. Because nobody plays around with great discharge mills anymore, the ball mills, but if you put uh, rubber liners in that and uh, put a great discharge in, you get about 25 to 30%. That's what we got at Polaris. Okay. In a, in a primary ball mill. We have the opportunity to, to test um, a number of different com I'm trying to think now that um, we, we have the opportunity to test um, a number of different configurations. Um, the, the, the DEM modeling work for that um, for the hammer mill is not as well advanced, um, and so these we have time for one more question, then I have to... Jim. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> I'm running out of time. Optimized group, but just uh, very interesting work that you're doing. Uh, it's great to see. A um, couple questions. There's been a lot of work done on the modeling. Um, is there any specific reason uh, why you haven't built like just a small one? Uh, Right off, uh, because it, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity there to just play with a tiny one. Like you have the facilities to do so, uh, and just a just a collaborative thing on the where. Um, I would suggest maybe putting your stuff on it, like your your hammers on a bit of an angle, and not dropping the material right on. Uh, just drop it in front, and it should pull it through. And then you might be able to do some pebble recycling. Yeah. Um, to, to answer the second point first, the the feed is not top dead centric, it is actually top um, it, In terms of why haven't we actually built something yet? Um, there's been a lot of debate about what size machine should we test. And we, we started off with an, an initial concept of something like a 300 millimeter diameter. 
the, the same as you would do for an HPGR. Um, we've looked at that, and we've looked at what are the two profiles that we need to, to work with, what is the minimum number of teeth that we sensibly have to have in the circumference, and we're, we're coming up with something a bit bigger than that. We, we haven't quite nailed it down. Uh, we're, we're currently running the GDM modeling on a machine which is um, nominally 850 millimeters diameter. The, the reason for that is that it compares directly with the HPGR test machine at UBC. And we are using <coughs> results from that test for those for, for, on that machine to, to, to compare directly to what we're getting <coughs> in the modeling of the, of the camp. The prototype machine will probably fall somewhere in between the 850 that we're currently modeling and the 300 that we first thought of. We're not quite there yet, but in, we will um, over the coming months um, as we get more and more of the DM work on what is the, the profile, what is the, the, the effects of speed, the, the the force, the, the force that needs to be applied in parallel with all of those tests and we'll be developing the detailed design for the prototype. And we've already kicked that off. We're just not at the point that we can today go and do it.